And then we have something that's called a covalent bond. Okay. Now out of the bonds, the ionic bond is the strongest bond that th that's known. All right. They are generally more stronger than a covalent bond. A covalent bond is certainly real. It's measurable. They have a strong attraction there, but it is not as such, such as an ionic bond. All right. Now, sometimes people get all confused about this, especially if you are simultaneously taking biology classes. You know, they'll tell you in the biology building that, well, you know, these... Uh, Ionic bonds like in sodium chloride, they dissolve really well and they got to be weak. No, that's not true. Ionic bonds are extremely strong. If you took two pair of molecular tweezers and tried to pull apart sodium and chlorine, it would require a heck of a lot of energy. Somewhere on the orders of a couple of thousand kilojoules or something, or joules or something like that. But if you put that in water, it'll dissolve like a snap. Well, look at your chemistry textbook. There's a chapter in there on bonding. And then there's another chapter, five or six chapters later, on solubility. They are two total different conversations that happen on different days of the week. All right. So do not think just because something will dissolve readily that its bond strength is not strong. All right. Because that's absolutely not the truth. Okay. So how does an ionic bond work? Well, the first thing you got to do is draw what's called a Lewis dot structure of an atom. And Lewis was this chemist who came out and said, okay, I'm going to concern myself with electrons. You see, he was smart on the idea that electrons was what made chemistry happen. Now, what is a Lewis dot structure? Well, remember, if you take any random Jane atom, X, what is the maximum amount of electrons that it could have around it in its valence shell? Eight. And if something had eight valence electrons around it, it would be a noble gas. So this is an example of a noble gas that is not which one? Which noble gas can this not be? Helium. Now helium's only got two electrons, not eight. So this is an example of a noble gas. Okay. Now, what are the rules with the uh, Lewis dot structure? There's really none. Two on the right, two on the bottom, two on the top, two on the left. There'll never be three on one side. All right. Now there can be less. Well, how many valence electrons would this have? Six. Six. An example of that would be what? Oxygen. Oxygen. Wonderful. Sulfur, selenium, whatever. All right, are we cool with that? Okay, so when we look at sodium, when I drew up that dot right there, that dot right there means what? It's got one valence electrons. Now, if it gets together with a chlorine, all right, chlorine has how many valence electrons? Seven. Okay. Now, what would happen if this sodium and this chlorine came together? And I do want to, to reiterate here. We are not answering questions that says, if I took sodium metal and reacted it with chlorine gas, what would happen? I'm not answering that question. That's chapter 8. Here's the question I'm answering. If there's a sodium here and a chlorine here and they happen to get married, what type of bond would they have? All right. Some of these things, there could be no reaction. All right. But what type of bond would they have? Well, here's what would happen. This right here, sodium, would lose an electron to chlorine. Now let's stop just a moment. Now, if that happened, chlorine now would have how many total electrons around it? Eight. And what atom on that periodic table would it feel like? AR. AR, A -R, argon. So right now, this chlorine is happy snappy, and it is feeling like argon. Well, wow. That chlorine has just fulfilled its octet. Now, if sodium, look at your periodic table. If sodium loses one electron, it would feel like what? Neon. Well, now that's good, too. 
So do you see how these things complement each other? They both now have their octet. This is what is called isoelectronic of neon. That means the same number of electrons neon has. And this is isoelectronic of argon. I mean, it has the same number of electrons that argon has. Well, that's cute. That's cute because they've complemented each other. So what is the word for the hour on the ionic? The word for the hour is transfer. One or more electrons is transferred, see. In an ionic bond, an electron will completely leave one atomic center and move completely to another atomic center, never to be seen again over here. All right. So in other words, that chlorine is so electronegative. Well, let me ask you, which one's more elect? We've not even talked about electronegative, have we? Okay, that's fine. This is a perfect time to get into it during this. Every atom has an electronegativity value. And what electronegativity means is its ability to suck an electron. Chlorine loves that. All right. If something is near chlorine, it will steal its electron. So how does the rule go? Well, if I could just have you point here to this periodic table. The highest electronegative atom known is fluorine, F. And that's on the Pauling scale, they call it. It's got electronegativity of 4.0, right? Electronegativity of 4.0. Um, now, the least one is francium, and it is 0.7, I think. Don't quote me on that. We'll look it up in a moment. But I think it's 0.7, and here's how electronegativity goes. They increase as you go up and increase as you go to the right in a periodic table. So let me ask you this question. If you had carbon and if you had oxygen... Which one would want the electrons, the oxygen or the carbon, more? Oxygen. The oxygen. It's more electronegative. The closer you move to fluorine, the more those atoms want electrons. The closer you, I mean, the further you get away from it, they don't want the electrons as much. And they have numerical values. Now, we're going to use the numerical values in a moment. But that's really not the most important thing, right? I mean, we're going to do a calculation or two for giggles. The most important thing is to be able to look at the periodic table, and if given two options, you tell me which is more. Because when you draw the pictures of these compounds, which is the road we're driving on, um, you want to know which atom holds the electrons to it. So on the board, which atom holds the electrons to it? The sodium or the, or the chlorine? Chlorine does. All right. It is lopsided. Now, this bond right here, these two things are now stuck by something that's called electrostatics. And that means opposites attract. Right? So if you have a plus charge and a minus charge, they will attract. All right. The electrodynamics of the situation. And I want to tell you, that's a strong situation. I mean, that's a strong attraction. Is when that happens. Now, does this electron ever come over here near this sodium? Oh, no. It doesn't. Not an ionic bond. Okay? So what's the word for ionic? Transfer. It leaves. Is there anybody confused on that issue? Okay, now let's talk about covalency. An example of a covalent bond would be iodine. How many valence electrons does iodine have? Seven. Wonderful. Who said seven? Great. How many valence electrons does this red iodine have? Seven. You with me? So if we're drawing a Lewis dot structure of iodine, right? We know iodine exists as I2 because it's one of our seven diatomics we just learned. This is how we're going to approach it. Now, what will happen here 